are so glad that you are here. If it is your first time, my name's Ryan. Get the wonderful opportunity to be a part of our teaching team. Thank you so much for giving us a little bit of your weekend. I thought we got rid of daylight savings time. Somebody told me that last year, and then apparently it made its way back. So here we are. Hey, we have been in a series on the disciples. Here's what I absolutely love about this series, is that there is a disciple that each and every one of us can relate to. Like, there are some people that think, man, I just don't make the cut. I'm just not one of those religious people. I don't know the worship songs. I don't know the scriptures. Half of these dudes didn't either. And so there is something, and that's why I love each and every week, like there's just something that sticks out about one disciple over another that goes, wait a minute. You mean to tell me God could use a man like that? That means he could probably use somebody like me. And so uh, this is like Netflix, okay? So if you missed a couple of episodes, we want you to go back and check those out. Um, Today I want to zoom in on the disciple Thomas. And I believe what we're going to discover is that there's a little bit of Thomas in you, and there's a little bit of Thomas in me. He's got this reputation for being doubting Thomas. But let's just all be honest at the beginning. We all have our doubts. John chapter 11 is the first movie scene, if you will, that we actually get some lines from from Thomas. John chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, the sister sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, the one whom you love is sick. Now watch what Jesus does in in verse 4. It says, when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. This is a group of people. This is a family that Jesus loves. I just want you to see how he treats people he loves. says, so when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place he was. (laughs) It's like, I ain't going nowhere. We good. But like, did you hear what we just said? Jesus, your boy just died. I mean, for a little bit, but I ain't worried about it. Like, Jesus is super chill. And then it says this in verse 7. It says, then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. Now, the disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and are you going to go there again? Hey, Jesus, do you realize there has been attempted murder on you? And you want to go back to the place where they tried to stone you? Not to be a little selfish, but Jesus, when people try and stone you, they might miss and hit me. (laughs) And then I just, in, in verse, let's see, in verse 16, verse 16, we get Thomas's first lines. This is what he says. It says, then Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Hey, anybody want to go die with Jesus today? Like, you just got to love Thomas. Like, Thomas, right away, you get this, just a little bit of that, like, pessimist. Like, let's just be honest. Like, we can fall into one or two categories. Some of us are optimists. Some of us are pessimists. We know what an optimist is, okay? An optimist These are the kind of people, they are happy-go-lucky. They ain't got no questions. They like everybody. They love people. The glass is half full. Uh, These are the people that they don't even really need coffee. They trust everybody. They leave their car unlocked. Their house is probably unlocked right now. Like, I'm just going to church. Nobody's going to steal anything. They, They leave money in their cup holder. They trust their employer. They trust the government. They're like, they're fine. They're fine. I mean, like, like these people, like they just think the world is a good, happy place. And then you got the rest of us. The pessimist, I mean, like, you know any skeptical people? Don't look at them right now, but you know what I'm saying? Like, 
Like there's some people, they don't trust nobody, okay? They got questions about everything and everybody. The glass ain't just half empty. The glass a little dirty. Who put their hands on this glass? Don't trust, no, don't trust the government, don't trust pastors. Listen, Pastor Amy and I get up here each and every week. And we say, hey, would you stand on your feet with everyone's head bowed and every eye closed? <laughs> we like to give people an opportunity to have a private moment to make Jesus the Lord and the Savior of the life. I prom- Amy can attest to it. There's always about two or three people like, I'm keeping my eyes open. <laughs> I ain't got time for, you might be lying. I didn't see that hand. I didn't see a hand. I didn't count. I was counting with you. I don't know you like that. I don't care. You ain't going to make me bow my head, close my eyes. Who do you think you are? I'm like, bro, can you please just give the person next to you a private moment? My goodness. I mean, they're just some people that they just not going to blindly follow nobody. They don't trust airplanes. Do you know the pilot? Do you know his name? Have you met him? Why would I meet the pilot already? But it just, well, buckle your seatbelt. That's the law. We have to buckle our seatbelt. Calm down. Uh, whenever I, I get, get an opportunity to go play basketball, I love to uh, bring uh, like little sports drinks, you know, a little Gatorade, Powerade, something, just to lighten the mood. You know, sometimes people come to the gym and try to bring all their anger management issues to the gym and want to act like they gangsters in Frisco. I'm like, you need to calm down. What are you talking about? <laughs> Relax, bruh. Who you mad at, bro? It's just one foul call, man. Hey, man, get, get, get this man some Gatorade. Calm down. Why don't you have a little drink, all right? We cool. Be easy. I remember the first time I, I started bringing Gatorade to the gym, one guy I was like, hey, man, you, you thirsty? And I handed him Gatorade. He goes, what? what's this? I said, uh, it's, a, it, it's a Gatorade. Where'd you get this? Walmart. <laughs> what, what's, what's going on? You put some poison in this? The seal is on it. You think I want to poison the people that I play basketball? Why, why, what, what, what's going on? He goes, where I come from? People don't do nice stuff for each other. Buddy, we're in Frisco. You need to relax. <laughs> I mean, there's just some people that just have that, that thing. And so I, I can fully understand how somebody might walk through the doors of a church and we go, hey, we got good news that they're kind of going, I don't know if it's that good. I don't know. I, I got some questions. I mean, there are just some people, they just read the Bible, and they're just like, this is amazing. And then there's other people that read the Bible, and they're honest. And they're going, what did they just say? In fact, I think what we've done over the course of the last few decades is we've actually question shamed people with their faith. Because there's a lot of people trying to deconstruct their faith. Sometimes they fail to reconstruct their faith. And so sometimes we don't make space for people to have doubts. Sometimes we don't make space for people to have questions. Sometimes the message can be, if you got some doubts, get out and come back when you got some faith. But my thought is, didn't you come to get some faith? Like you're in the right place. And so might I submit, if you are reading the scriptures and you don't have questions, you ain't reading the scriptures. Because it says some stuff that even I'd be like, man, well, now, wait a second. Now, what, you want me to cut out my right eye if it causes me to sin? Yet I've never met a Christian with a patch on their eye. What happened to you? Instagram? You could have deleted the app. You didn't have to cut your eye out, brother. My God. At some point, I think all of us, if we're willing to admit it, and today's that day where I give you the space and grace to go, I got some questions. Today's the day where maybe you're not a church person. Maybe you're not a person of faith. Or maybe you used to be and you lost your faith. Dare I say, today is the day you might get your faith back. Because the good news is there's somebody in the band just like you that is seeing signs, miracles, and wonders and is still going, I don't know. In fact, 
sometimes when you and I approach the text and we have our questions, I actually think that's a good thing. Because I don't care how long you live, you will never fully understand God or his word. And I like that. The reason I like that is if we served a God that was small enough to be understood, he wouldn't be big enough to be worshipped. So we're going to be doing this for a very long time, baby. And I'm in for it. It makes the journey interesting because, yes, there are times where I come across a verse that I do not understand. But there are times where I'm reading a verse that I don't understand, and guess what else I get back? A peace that transcends my understanding. And so sometimes there are things that are happening in my life that I shouldn't have peace, but all of a sudden, I get peace. You ever met somebody that got laid off, but they got peace? That don't make sense. Where'd they get it? They were reading something that they couldn't understand and got something that went beyond their understanding. It's still powerful. The Word of God is living and active. Today's the day where we get our faith back. And what I love is that here we have doubting Thomas, what some would consider to be this pessimist. And you know what he says? He goes, Jesus... I don't, you want to go back to the, I think we're going in the wrong direction. The people you love, they, they got a crisis, and you want to go the opposite direction, and we're going to get stoned. And, but yet, he's the only disciple to raise his hand and go, hey, guys, let's roll. Let's go die with Jesus. There's a couple of ways to read this. Because he's like, yo, we about to die. Let's ride. He's not ride or die. He's ride and die. He's going, I would rather die with Jesus and my questions than live without him. That's Thomas. I just want to give hope to somebody today that felt like they had to leave to go figure things out. No, you can come to the altar. And you can bring your questions. And you can bring your doubts. And you can walk out of this church and you can come up off this link with faith like you never had before. He made top 12, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> like some of you have just been beating yourself up because you got some doubts and you got some questions. He's top 12. If he's top 12, what does that mean for us? It means that God's not done with us yet. The next time we see our friend Thomas is post-resurrection. And it's, uh, it's an interesting thing of who Jesus decides to reveal himself to first. It's, it's an interesting order, and I'm sure we'll, we'll do a series on that, or maybe we'll talk about that at Easter, but I just love how Jesus had a very particular strategy on how he revealed himself to who and, and when. Now, it's interesting in John chapter 20, Verse 19, it says, on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Verse 24 says this, now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord, but he said to them, unless I see his hands, the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Some people need evidence. Some people got to see it to believe it and if we're honest sometimes our doubts got evidence sometimes our worries got evidence sometimes you have so many disappointments in your life you have actually trained your soul to doubt sometimes you are looking at a bad report and you're going well of course I have reason to doubt We're all one unanswered prayer away from struggling with doubt and not being able to sleep at night. (laughs) 
Sometimes it's not unanswered prayer that gives you doubts. Sometimes it's the answered prayers for other people that give you doubts. You're going to give her a man. I prayed for her, and then you're going to you act like I didn't even call you. You want to act like I'm not standing right here. I'm sitting right here. I'm giving. I'm serving. I'm giving. Like, what's good, God? Like, what's popping? <laughs> and so sometimes you can walk through the doors of the church, and you can sing the song, but you can still have this thing in the back of your mind going, I don't know if he hears me. Loss will give you doubt. Raise your hand if you've lost a loved one in the last three years. Those are the moments where you can go looking for God like Mary and Martha and you can feel like God's walking in the other direction. We all have moments, ladies and gentlemen, where we can lose something and we can have some doubts. We could lose a job. Some of us have lost a marriage. Some of us just lost a friend. Some of us have had a crisis of faith when Pastor Ricky passed away. And I still miss him like crazy. But you could just have these moments where you go, God, are you? Sure that you are who you say you are. And sometimes we just don't have the space to doubt, the space to grieve, the space to be disappointed, the space to admit that sometimes we have prayers that are unanswered. And we don't even want to say it out loud, but Thomas will. And sometimes we have to admit that there's a little bit of Thomas in us that desperately needs a touch from heaven. And what I love about what the story says next is it says eight days later, eight days later, Thomas is going, I need to see some evidence. And nobody was in a hurry, not the other disciples. And not Jesus. Eight days later. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again. Except this time, Thomas is with them. And it says this, although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord, my God. Note this about our friend Thomas. I just love that Thomas was in a small group with his doubts. And for eight days, that small group was going, we've seen Jesus, and we're going to wait until you see Jesus. I mean, they're going, we've seen the Lord. He's back. The band's back together. He's going, no, 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 no. I need to see something for myself. And they didn't have this moment. Let me twist his arm. Let me try and convince you. No, no, no. I don't know. No, I'm not taking your word for it. And his small group's going, I know you got some doubt. We're not kicking you out of the band. You're still in the group. And I just got to tell you, some of the biggest mistakes that people can make when they're trying to wrestle with their doubts and wrestle with their faith is they do it outside of the house of faith. Some people think they got to leave the faith to go get the faith. But most of the time when you leave the faith, that's not where you find faith. Sometimes you got to walk into the house of faith with your doubts and go, you know what? Can I just have some space and some grace to have some questions? And can we be the kind of people that don't feel like we got to make something up to make somebody feel better? What I loved about this small group is they went, we don't have to solve your doubts, but we're going to love you just like Jesus. And we will let Jesus reveal himself to you 
when Jesus wants to reveal himself to you. Now, my favorite part about the story is that Jesus says, hey, touch the side. That's cool. See the hands? Go ahead. Feel for yourself. But if I was in the room with Thomas, I'd be like, hey, Thomas, um, you know them doors is locked, right? You know anybody else that can walk through walls, you still need to see the side, because I don't know nobody. Casper is not here. Okay, I'm trying to tell you. This man is who he said, but Jesus is like, I will give Thomas all the evidence he needs. And so sometimes what we have to do, especially if we have a Thomas in our life, is give them space and grace to let Jesus reveal himself to him. But while we wait, I'm going to love you like Jesus and pray that he gives you all the evidence you need at some point in your journey. But sometimes I just have to walk out what it looks like to love like Jesus whilst and give somebody their eight days. The interesting thing is the number eight in scripture is the number for new beginnings. It's to be able to give somebody the space to go, I'm going to let you have a fresh start with Jesus whenever you're. Jesus thinks it's time to show you something. But I think a note for all of us isn't just what happens in the room, it's who's in the room when they're in the room. To be able to say, listen, Thomas, if you're having some doubts, if you're having some questions, that's not the time to leave your group. No, that's the time to stay. And hopefully there's enough space and grace for you and me to have seasons where we simply have some questions. Now, what I think is interesting with the rest of the story is that Jesus met Thomas where he was. He met him right where he was, right where his doubts were, and gave him the evidence that he needed. And Thomas says, my Lord, my God, he recognizes that Jesus was who he said he was all along, but Jesus didn't leave him there. He challenged him, and I believe he's challenging us to go to the next level. Jesus says to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Which is a rhetorical question. The answer is yes. Then he says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. We serve a God that deserves all honor, all glory, and all praise, and all worship. And so the question that we have to answer this weekend is not if we will give God what he deserves. The question we must answer this weekend is when we will give him what he deserves. Because most people will wait until they get their evidence to then lift up a shout and praise. So they pray for a promotion, they get a job, and then they want to dance in the aisles and do the gritty in the street. And like, first off, that's a church dance. They stole that from us, okay? (laughs) Just in case you're wondering where they got the gritty. My mama been doing the gritty since the 90s, so y'all need to chill, okay? (laughs) But it's easy to worship on that end of the spectrum. But Jesus is going, hey, Thomas, (laughs) there is a group of people that will be alive thousands of years from now in Carrollton, Texas that don't get to see the hole in the side and the nail marked hands yet they'll believe anyway. And you want to talk about levels to this thing when you can worship before a breakthrough? It takes a special person to be able to walk into a doctor's office before reports given, talking about some, I'm going to see a victory. People are like, why are you so happy? You at the doctor. You're like, I'm going to see a victory. Because there's something in your soul. You want to take it to another level? Worship God after a disappointment. Now we talk. 
It's one thing to walk into a doctor's office. It's one thing to be let go from your job and you're walking out with your boxes and you're still singing, I'm going to see a victory. Hey, Thomas, I hope you get your evidence. But in case you don't, worship anyways. Believe anyways. I want to show you something as we close, and the worship team can make their way back to the stage. So I was studying Thomas. I, I I found a verse that I've never, I've read, but I've never seen. You have those moments, you know what I'm saying? You read the whole Bible and you read it again, you're like, I never saw that before. Technically you did, and technically you didn't, you know? It's it's inside the Great Commission. And I've I've just never, I've never seen this line until, until I began studying Thomas. Matthew 28, verse 16, it says, Um, Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee. I know what you're thinking. Ain't there 12? There was. And Pastor Mike going to talk about that other guy in a couple weeks. Um, It says, now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. The scripture says, and when they saw him, they worshiped him. Of course they did. (laughs) He just overcome the grave, resurrected Jesus, of course. What else would they do? But I've just never seen this line before. It says, and when they saw them, saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Some worshiped. Some doubted. And I just, you just got to see Jesus' response to some worshiping and some doubting. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always. To the end of the age. Talk to y'all later. <laughs> Jesus, some doubt it, some worship. He's like, I know. Go change the world anyway. But Jesus, don't you want me to change first? I'm with you. Take you and your questions and go pray for somebody. And baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Like, let's get this thing moving. I'll be back. (laughs) It's like, Jesus, you didn't want to fix that before you just ascended it off into the clouds? I'm with you. And your doubts. And your questions. You're not out of the band. You would have thought, some worship, some doubted. Jesus would have said, bring the worshipers over here. Okay, let me talk to the worshipers. Okay, listen, worshipers, y'all got it. I'm going to baptize y'all. I'm going to give y'all authority. I'm going to give y'all power. And these doubt, can you believe I even let them in? I cannot believe. He gave the greatest commission ever given to some that worshiped and to some that doubted. I just wanted to encourage somebody this weekend that has been praying for a very, very long time and they haven't seen answers. And sometimes you just lose steam. Today, I want you to get your faith back. Today, I want you to get some spiritual energy in you to go. But don't I got to come to some conclusions and don't I got to... Jesus is going, go. And I'll meet you where your doubts are. Sometimes you'll see evidence. Sometimes you won't. But I'm still working. I'm always working in some way, shape, or form. And so I just got to be honest with you. There are days where I have my doubts. I pray anyways. 
I have never had somebody go, Ryan, will you pray for me? No, not a good day today. I'm having some doubts. I don't know what to tell you. Sorry. <laughs> yep, sorry. Don't know what to tell you. No, I pray in the name of Jesus that he would heal people. Because cancer has to bow not at Ryan's name, but at the name of Jesus. And scoliosis has to bow at the name of Jesus. And kidney disease has to bow at the name of Jesus. And people that are praying to get pregnant, wombs have to come alive in the name of Jesus. And so I pray anyways. I speak faith anyways. I speak life anyways. You might have brought your doubts today, but I brought my faith. Let's go. And let's just see what happens. Today, if you have experienced in your life a medical miracle, if you have experienced a medical miracle, I want you to stand to your feet right now. <laughs> miracle, 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 miracle. Miracle, miracle, miracle. I see you, Fred. All right, now this is what I want you all to do. If you're standing to your feet, you are our prayer team for today. And if you need a miracle, I want you to just raise your hand. If you see a hand raised in the next few moments, here's what we're gonna do. I want the people that have received the miracle to pray for the people that need it. And what the rest of us are gonna do is we're gonna sing, do it again. Now, some of you came today, you like, you received a miracle. You're like, I didn't know I was going to pray for somebody. You're going to pray for somebody, sweetie. Don't think you're getting out of it. She's like, no, let me sit back down. It was, it was a barely a miracle. I took some time. No, it's just a little headache. We good. We good. Come on, church. We got to get activated. God's done a miracle in your body and in your body and in your body and the touch of heaven is on your life. And so, yeah, we're going to let you lay hands on some people too. So once again, keep your hand up if you need prayer today and we're going to join forces. We're going to create small groups all over and begin to pray. Go ahead and stand to your feet. Keep your hand up if you need prayer. Yeah. Come on. When there was no way and I believe, Come on. Yeah, I'll see you do
Come on, make some noise for Jesus in this place. Come on. We've been praying for stuff all day, and I just believe that the power of God is in this place. There is something powerful about an atmosphere of faith and what it can do to shift your life. And I'm just believing that God's going to be healing people all week. When he does, will you let us know? Let us know when he does. That's important. Because there's somebody in your row that still needs to believe in the goodness of God. And your testimony and your story continues to help people, especially when they have their doubts. With every head bowed and every eye closed, and I mean everybody, okay? I mean everybody. I want to give each and every person an opportunity today to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of their life. I realize that there are people under the sound of my voice that perhaps have lost their faith or maybe you never had your faith. And today you just, you didn't know you could be a part of the band. You didn't know you could be top 12. You didn't know that you could have some questions and still have some doubts and still have the space and grace to be loved by a Savior you're here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, or you want to rededicate your life to Christ, would you just slip up a hand and say, hey, Ryan, that's me. Ryan, that's me. Is there anybody today? I see a couple hands over there. There's one, I see two, I see three, four, I see anybody else? Anybody else? Five, I see that. Anybody else? Six, seven, I see. Eight, I see. Anybody else? Nine, ten, anybody else? Oh, I see you all the way in the back there, young man. I see you. Eleven, anybody else? I see you, young man. Twelve, anybody else? Anybody else? Hey, can we all say this prayer together? Say, Jesus, thank you for dying on a cross. For my sins, I ask now that you would be the Lord and Savior of my life. I surrender my past, my present, my future, and my doubts to you. My life is yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it. Amen. Come on, can we make some noise for every single person? that gave their heart to Christ. Heaven is rejoicing right now. And if you prayed that prayer for the first time today, we'd love to pray with you down here at the front. Our prayer team would love to just guide you through even just some next steps as to what it means to to follow Jesus. And we want to give you just a little booklet to kind of help you figure that out. And and if you got a you got a jet, you can text the phrase I am saved to the number 64600. Again, text the phrase, I am saved, to the number 64600, and we'll actually send you a digital link for you to be able to download that. Come on, can we make some noise for every single person that made that decision? Join us next week as we continue on this powerful series on on the disciples. Did you have a good time today? Good. Can I bless you before we go? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may he cover you with his name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Have a great week.